Dear students, welcome to the English second paper class brought to you by Amar Ghore Amar School. You know that the whole world has been infected with a deadly virus, Corona or COVID-19. In this situation, the government has decided to close down your schools. But you don't have to worry because the government has also brought your classroom to your home through Amar Ghore Amar School and it is being telecasted at Shangshad Bangladesh Television. So without wasting any time, let's get started. The topic that we are going to learn today is present perfect and present perfect continuous. You can get this lesson in your book prescribed by NCTB at Unit 5, Lesson 3. Before we start, let's see a conversation. Rajiv and his friends have gathered in the school canteen to discuss their preparations for a cultural show. Read the conversation between Rajiv and his friends and notice the underlined parts. I hope you have your book before you. I'm reading out the conversation for you for now. Well, let's talk about the invitation card. When can we print them? I have just talked to a press and the manager said he would print them in two days. That's great. Now how about donations? Have we got enough money? I have collected 500 taka from bookshop. Our club chairman has already given 2000. My sister has requested her boss to donate some money. He has agreed to help us. Okay. Let's hope he will give us a good amount of money. Has anyone talked with the decorators? I have already talked to them. They will do the stage, lighting and the sound. Fantastic. Seems that all of you have done excellent jobs. Thank you. So dear students, what can you see in this conversation? The underlined parts that I've shown you here are basically using present perfect tense. As you can see, in these structures, we can see a common feature. What is that? In all these cases, we have used verb have or has before the past participle of the verb. In these cases, the verbs that have been used are actually completed before now or the actions have taken place before I have started talking. So I hope you have already understood what we are going to learn today. Yes, you have guessed it right. We are going to learn present perfect and besides that we are going to learn present perfect continuous tense in today's class. So dear students, what are the learning outcomes of today's class? After we cover this topic, we will be able to understand the uses of present perfect and present perfect continuous tense We'll be able to write sentences correctly using the correct structure of present perfect and present perfect continuous. And lastly, we'll be able to ask and answer questions using present perfect and present perfect continuous. Where do we use present perfect tense? We use present perfect tense to talk about past actions or states which are still connected to the present. Let's look at the example. He has been to 10 different countries. In the second sentence, we can see, I haven't seen her today. My phone has run out of battery. Have you ever dyed your hair a different color? Now, in all these structures, what can we see in common? Here, we can see that the verbs that have been used here the events that we talked about have been completed before, but still they have a connection with the present. We use present perfect tense to for past actions with a result in the present. So we can use the present perfect to talk about a past action that has a result in the present. Let's look at the example. He has broken his leg, so he cannot go on holiday. In this example, what can we see? A person has broken his leg and because of his injury, he won't be able to go on a holiday. So the 
effect of the injury is still connected to the present. On the other hand, in the second example, they haven't called me, so I don't think they need me today. In this example, we can see that the effect of not calling me is still resulted in the present tense. Let's move on to the next uses. We use present perfect tense for actions that happened at an unspecified time before the present. What do we mean by unspecified? That means the time that is being referred here is not specific. For example, we haven't had a lot of positive feedback so far, which means that the feedback that we have received has not been mentioned which time we have received here. Now, this is the next uses of present perfect tense. We use present perfect tense for unfinished time and states, which means that the time that is being continued up to now or the time that has not been finished yet in these cases, we can use present perfect tense. We also use it to talk about life experiences as our life is also an unfinished time period. So when we talk about one of my experiences of life, we know that my life has not been finished yet. For that reason, it is unfinished time and we can use present perfect tense in here. For example, I have worked for six different companies. In this example, we can see that I will be able to or I am able to work in many countries even in the future. For that reason, since the time is unspecified, we have used I have worked. In the second example, he has never won a gold medal. What does this sentence refer? He hasn't got a gold medal yet, but there is a possibility that he can win it in near future. Have you ever been to Australia? So I'm talking about one of my life experience here. For that reason, I have used present perfect tense. Now we are going to look at the structure that can be used in present perfect tense in case of affirmative, negative, and interrogative sentence. When we use affirmative sentence structure using present perfect, what do we usually do? At first, the sentence starts with the subject. Then we have have or has depending on the subject. We are going to use the past participle form or V3 form of the verb. And at the end, we can have the object. In these cases, what you have to keep in mind that in case of first person, second person, and third person plural number, we use the verb have. On the contrary, in case of third person singular number, we are going to use the verb has. But there's one thing in common. In all the cases of present perfect tense, we have to use the past participle form of the verb. As in, I have worked. As you can see, the main form of the verb work is W-O-R-K. But here we have added ED at the end because this is the past participle form of the verb worked. If you want to use the contraction form or the short form of have, then we can use apostrophe as in I apostrophe V-E. I hope you have understood this structure. Now let's move on to the structure of negative sentence. In case of negative sentence using present perfect tense, we just have to add not after the verb have or has. As in, I haven't been abroad yet. You haven't answered my question. He hasn't been home for five years. Now what you have to focus on here? In this example, he hasn't been home for five years. Why have we used been here? Do not forget, if you have the be verb as the principal verb of the sentence, the past participle form of be verb is been. For that reason, even in the first sentence we have written, I haven't been abroad yet. 
this is one of my life experience. So there is a possibility that I can be able to be in a broad in future. For that reason, we have used the negative structure of present perfect tense in here. Let's look at another examples. She hasn't found a new job. It hasn't finished yet. We haven't worked on a firm. And lastly, they haven't seen each other for ages. As you can see, when I have used the contraction form or the short form of have not or has not, I have used apostrophe. So do not forget to use the apostrophe one if you want to use the contraction. Now this is the structure of interrogative sentence of present perfect tense. In this cases, what you have to do is when we pose a question, when we ask a question, we just have to put the verb have or has at the beginning of the sentence. As in, have I worked? Has she worked? Do not forget to use the question mark at the end of the sentence because it is very vital to make the sentence meaningful. Now this is the structure that we are going to follow when you use WH question to ask a question. For example, where have I been recently? Where have you studied for the exam? We know that WH words like what, who, which, whom, whose, where, when and how can be referred to as WH words. And these words can be used to ask a question. Let's look at the last example. How long have they worked there? As you can see, we have just put the verb V at the beginning. And since we are asking a question with WH word, we have used how long before that. What is present perfect continuous tense? The present perfect continuous tense is used to show that an action started in the past and has continued up to the present moment. For example, in this picture, what you can see? The action or the event that we are being mentioning here has started in the past. That means it's a past event, but it is being continued up to now, right now. For that reason, we have used present perfect continuous tense. Now the structure of present perfect continuous tense in positive or in affirmative sentence. What you have to do is you have to use the subject at the beginning. Then we are going to use have or has with that. We are going to use been, verb plus ing, and at last you can use the time expression if necessary. For example, I have been speaking. Now if you want to use the time expression for a long time, we are going to put that at the end of the sentence. We can say, I have been speaking for a long time over the phone. So what can we see in the structures? In all these cases, apart from third person singular number, we have used the verb have. Only in terms of third person singular number as he, she or it, we have used the verb has. To make negative sentence using present perfect continuous tense, you just have to put a not after have or has. For example, it has not been raining, you have not been crying. So don't get puzzled over the structure of negative sentence, just put a not after have or has. Now this is the structure of interrogative sentence in present perfect continuous tense. If you use yes no question or if you pose a yes no question, you just have to put have or has at the beginning of the sentence. For example, has she been working? On the other hand, when we ask WH question as in what have you been playing? 
In this case, we have used the WH word what or where before have or has. Now many of you may get confused about where to use for and where to use since in case of time expression in present perfect continuous tense. There is a shortcut for that. When we talk about a period of time or we can say that when we talk about a duration we use for. For example, I have been studying for 20 minutes. Here the duration of my studying is 20 minutes. Since we are referring to a duration or how long I have been doing it, I have used the time expression for here. In the next column we can see that since has been used to talk about a point in past time or we can say when the action began. For example, if I say I have been living here since 2009, that means that I have started to live here in 2009. So this is the time expression when I began this event or when I began this word. For that reason I have used since here. Now let's have a quick recap of what we have learned today. Present perfect tense is used for actions that happened at an unspecified time before the present, actions that have ended recently and for states that started in the past and are still continuing. On the other hand, the present perfect continuous tense indicates that something began in the past and has continued up to now or it has current relevance or is likely to continue in future. Now it's time for a homework. This homework can be found in your book of English second paper prescribed by NCTP. What we have to do here? Here you can see that I have used a passage where there are some gaps. What you have to do is you have to use the right form of the verb in this blank. I'm reading out the passage for you now. You can find it in your book. Recently, it rained in Munira's town. So far, she see rains three times. Munira always loved the sound of the raindrops on her tin shed house. She has be out in the rain two times before. Munira's daughter, Mishu, never play in the rain. This is her first experience of playing in the rain. Munira is worried about her daughter. She might catch cold. Munira just buy a new umbrella. She puts on her raincoat and goes out with the umbrella. Do not forget to do the ASW. Submit it to your respective teacher when the school reopens. The evaluation given by the teacher will be added to your continuous assessment.